Uh, we want to bring in Alfred Eskandar, Salt Financial President and Chief Operating Officer. Alfred, it's great to see you again. So it looks like more broadly speaking that Wall Street has been sh is shaking off this surprise announcement from the Bank of Japan early this morning. How are you, though, looking at it just from a market's perspective and what this could mean for equities moving forward? Well, I, I think the the, uh, the big news here was the big surprise, uh, completely unexpected. Uh, global markets reacted much stronger than we did. Uh, if you take a look at the open uh, to today, um, the trading right now, markets really haven't responded that much with the, with the exception of the 10 year moving up seven bips. Um, overall, I think what this ultimately means is that you're going to start seeing some yield um, in the Japanese market. And, and if you look at the Japanese investor for the last X number of years, they've been chasing yield outside. So uh, presumably you could expect uh, more onshore investing from uh, uh, Japanese institutional retail. Why do our markets so quickly shrug it off, Alfred? You know, a couple of reasons. One is, you know, we have been um, sort of lulled into this current environment where we know where rates are with, with the states. Uh, we have incredibly efficient uh, and very liquid markets. Um, news dissemination is incredibly strong. So there's very few shocks uh, or news uh, breaks that, that, that tend to rattle us. Uh, I think that's one big difference between the U.S. markets and a lot of other markets around the world. Alfred, in terms of how this sets us up for the final two weeks of the year and then looking forward into 2023, anything at this point to be a little bit more optimistic about? You know, I tend to have an optimistic bias, so you, Shantana, you're probably asking the wrong person. Um, I look at 2023 as a real opportunity for bonds and for multi-asset portfolios. So if you think about your traditional 60-40, which didn't work this year, um, really has a strong chance of uh, regaining its, uh, its sort of risk controlled uh, view. Um, when you combine different asset classes together uh, in a single portfolio, you will reduce the overall volatility and risk is which, what investors ultimately want. Um, and I think given where rates are in the US, it's going to have a lot of competition for equities. Um, certainly when you're able to get bond indices in, in the neighborhood of four and a quarter, four and a half, uh, versus where they were last year of 1.7, uh, it's pretty attractive. Certainly attractive to older investors, uh, more risk-averse investors, and you could finally clip a coupon that actually means something this time. <laughs> but Alfred, we have driven the final nail in the coffin of the 60-40 about 20 times this year. It's good yeah. to hear it come back from the dead. Uh, are you ruling out any type of Santa Claus rally here? Well, I mean, I don't know how many exact days we've got left. It's already the 20th. Um, Anything could happen. Uh, I, I doubt it, to be honest with you. Just looking at overall volumes and participation in the market, it's a little, little bit light. I think everybody would love to put 2022 um, behind them and just kind of, uh, you know, start the, uh, you know, start the new year off uh, with a, a better viewpoint and a much better chance of recouping some of the losses from this year because, you know, the indices have, have gotten pretty hit pretty bad. Alfred, when you take, I, I know you prefer uh, bonds right now, or you're seeing more opportunity, I should say, at least in fixed income. When it does come to the equity market, the whole debate over growth versus value, whether or not growth is going to maybe regain some momentum in the new year. Do you see any truth to that, or does it make more sense to stick to some of those value plays? No, I, I mean, uh, value and even some small cap stuff would probably play better out um, in next year. Uh, if you think about growth, it's it's gotten its butt handed to it uh, this year, and it, it's still elevated in terms of, of, of where the growth stocks are, are, are being priced uh, relative to their earnings. So I think value will certainly do, has a better chance. I mean, no one has a crystal wall, but uh, if, I, if I was to put money to work, which we will, it will be um, value-oriented, continue to, to put money in defensive sectors. Um, and again, look to manage risk by including a mix of, of different asset classes in the portfolio. And I've said this before on, on your show uh, a few times, and that is there's plenty of products out there that kind of offer uh, the ability to mix uh, different asset classes together so the novice investor does not have to try to figure it out on their own. Additional products, which also include buffer ETFs, uh, fixed index annuities that also protect uh, downside completely or, you know, to a certain portion. Um, there's a lot of product innovation, and I really urge uh, investors to look beyond just picking single stocks every uh, every time. 
will do, and Alfred, I always look beyond as well. I look at your Zoom shot there, A++ for having wine in your <laughs> office. That is the first in my book, and uh, really, that's a great move. At the end of the day, you don't have to go far. Alfred, thanks so much for being here. Merry Christmas to you.